All right, welcome back everybody. And for this lesson, we're going to learn a technique of converting a photograph into a coloring page. And it's pretty interesting because it's a um, item that is requested quite often and it's very simple to do, but unless you know the technique, it uh, could be very confusing. Um, but it's very simple, so it's not gonna be a big deal. We're gonna be using the filter menu, or the filter effects to apply that and to create the effect of a coloring page. And we're going to apply that to these, this bouquet of flowers that I have here. And we're going to make it so that way uh, you can put this in a layout with a book and uh, your kids can color the flowers or the roses in any color that they want. So they don't have to paint the roses red, in other words. Anyhow, um, the first thing I'd like to do is make sure that my background layer is not locked and that I do have a copy of that background layer. And to do that, I'm going to be doing what's known as a non-destructive edit, and I'm going to create a copy of this background by dragging this down. So left-click and drag down to the post-it note down here in the Layers panel, and when I release, it creates a copy and it unlocks the layer. Of course, I could always create a copy of the background layer by doing a Command-J on the Mac or a Control-J on the PC, or I can right-click and choose Duplicate Layer here that'll have the same effect. Once I have this background layer copy, I can now apply an effect to it. Here in the Photoshop Elements 9, I do have an effect uh, gallery up here at the top. And right now I've got the sketch uh, styles selected and I can just drag out one of these effects and place it on top of my image and it will apply that effect to the image. The problem is, is that this is very limiting because I don't have any controls as to how dark this is going to be. And as you can see, I really got a, a bad effect on this. As a matter of fact, I don't want the stamp effect, but the point is I have no way of controlling that. I have no way of changing any settings. So I'm actually going to go into the filter gallery to fix that. So the first thing I'm going to do is undo. So I revert back to the original. And now I'm going to go to the select menu here, choose select, um, the filter menu and I'm going to choose the filter gallery inside the filter menu. Once I get inside of the filter gallery, I can see the same sort of icons that I have here, except in this case they're in color a little bit, and uh, I have the option to see sort of a preview here with these little thumbnails. Now in this filter gallery, I can zoom in and zoom out here in the bottom left hand corner if I wanted to zoom into my image so I can literally see what's going on there. Uh, I can use the zoom and now at 200% zoom. And then I have all of my different styles here in the center, and then I have controls that I didn't have before. I have them available here to the right. Now, I do want to go to Sketch, because that's what I was looking at earlier. But if I click on any of these, I automatically get a preview of the effect itself, so I can see what's going on. And the um, severity of that effect can be changed here by altering these sliders here on the left. So I removed a lot of grain on this one. I had a lot of grain there. But I'm going to go to the Sketch gallery here and I'm going to choose photocopy for this example because I am trying to make a photo uh, coloring page out of this photo. So I choose photocopy. Now what you're seeing is it uh, looks like a photocopy and I can see there's a lot of shadowing going on here. But I can go to these sliders and change how much detail I'm working with and what the darkness setting is going to be. So for example if I move the detail setting down I'll get it to lighten up a little bit. So I can tell this photograph to lighten up. And that's really what I want to do. I like those shadows and those highlights, but I don't want them to be as thick as they were. And I think a setting of one here will work out great. Now you might think, well, you've gone too far and that looks really bad. But I can adjust the darkness here. I can adjust the darkness up. Right now it's setting at 10, but I'm going to adjust it to something like, uh, let's see, I'm very comfortable with. Uh, looks, looks good, maybe 20 seven or so. So that's going to look really good. So I've got some nice defined edges around that image and I still have the shadow effect so if I wanted to add some color there it might shine through with those shadows. Um, but uh, this is a pretty neat effect right here and when I click OK now it looks like a coloring page. So again very easy effect to do but unless you know the tools and know how to use them you may not uh, know how to get to this this point. So when we look at our original we had this and now we've got the effect of the coloring book page and I can do this for any image that I want. I can go to the filter gallery, choose the uh, photocopy and then adjust those sliders until I get the exact look and feel that I want. Awesome. Thank you for joining me again today and I hope you have fun creating as many coloring books as you want for your kids.